Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And welcome to this week's supply and demand for S Gold and S&P fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead, starting the 28th of October. And hope you all had a great trading week. And uh, yeah, getting straight into the uh, the week ahead fundamentals, and it will be a very busy week in the United States as investors focus on the advanced estimate of Q3 GDP growth, non-farm payrolls, the unemployment rate, and jolts job openings. Other important data releases will include the ISM manufacturing PMI, CB uh, consumer confidence, the PCE inflation report, and personal spending and income figures across the Atlantic, the euro area and Germany will release inflation and GDP growth data while Germany's GFK consumer uh, sentiment, unemployment rate and retail sales will also be closely watched. In Asia, China will publish its manufacturing and services PMIs and Japan's central bank will announce its interest rate decision alongside updates on the country's unemployment rate and consumer confidence. So lots going on this week. So getting into uh, some of the technicals and um, updated fundamentals. So let's get into the dollar index. And the dollar index has just been really on a tear. And this has mainly been driven by um, the uh, the market uh, anticipating um, a Trump uh, win at the moment. He uh, buys, you know, several polls. Um, he is uh, seen to be in the lead now. Um, it says here that demand for the dollar keeps climbing, says Carl's Shim Carl Shimota, uh, chief market strategist at CorePay, with less than two weeks to go before next Friday's Federal Reserve meeting and the US presidential election. Global investors are piling into the greenback, cutting wages on an aggressive easing cycle and betting that the next administration's policy mix will inflict serious damage on other major economies while generating higher levels of inflation at home, he explains. So, um, yeah, it does look like um, the the US dollar um, is not doing as, as bad in terms of uh, monetary policy wise uh, than it was, you know, maybe about a month ago. I think there was about 50 basis points expected of cuts and then that got reduced. And now we're also seeing uh, economists nudging up quarterly US economic growth projections through uh, early next year on more sanguine views of consumer demand and maintain views that limited inflation will keep the Federal Reserve on a path lower uh, borrowing, uh, on a path toward lower borrowing costs. So um, it does look like, you know, the, it says here, while the pace of economic growth in 2025 is projected to be slower relative to this year, forecasters trimmed their year ahead recession odds to 25%. So that's really key. So um, there's a really a low chance of a recession at the moment. And so um, it does look like the dollar is um, a bit of all systems going, of course, uh, at the moment, I say of course, but at the moment, fundamentals uh, really aren't driving the market. Um, it's really about whether, um, you know, the next um, president is going to be Donald Trump or Kamala Harris and then the, um, you know, and, and, and basically their, their policies. And again, uh, I've been saying this for months is that the uh, the um, uh, uh, Republican Donald Trump uh, policies are seen really as being appreciative. And this is why you're seeing uh, the dollar move to the upside. But uh, uh, I think for me, nothing's really changed. If there is a pullback, it doesn't look like there is uh, one coming. But of course, everything pulls back eventually. It just depends on uh, when. And if you do get a pullback and you think that Donald Trump is going to win, then you know, basically you're looking for a pullback. I think the dollar will end up, you know, dropping like a stone if um, if uh, Kamala Harris, um, you know, wins uh, the uh, the election. So, uh, you know, I was saying to the guys in the uh, uh, private members group that um, it's OK to not trade around the election. There's going to be a lot of volatility. And if you want to just, uh, you know, hang tight and not trade, that's a decision, too. There's lots of 
uh, big investors who are just, you know, um, on the sidelines and taking their money out of the market and just going to observe what what happens. There's nothing wrong with that. So um, that is also an option myself if I'm going to be trading around the election, uh, other currencies really, but also as well, I'm reduced my position size, uh, my usual position size to half a position or quarter a position. So um, that's what I'll be doing um, going into the election. So if I do lose, I'm not losing too much right um as we are heading into a volatile time so uh for me though dollar is still continues to be a buy as long as um you know the polls uh continue to show that uh donald trump is likely to be uh the next president and again it's by the rumor right by the rumor sell the fact possibly um doesn't mean that he will be but the rumor is that you know it's looking like he's leading in several polls important polls so uh you know that's the reason why you're, we're seeing the dollar uh move to the upside that obviously changes if the polls show something different so um dollar for me is still more of a buy than a sell and will continue to be a more of a medium term buy if Donald Trump does get into uh, power. So um, dollar yen. So again, dollar yen at the moment, um, also kind of suffering from uh, two, and I say suffering, but it's uh, been weakening based on uh, two major, um, I guess, um, uh, issues. One is the, uh, the Bank of Japan have been really a bit dovish um, in, in in recent times, although they came out um, recently and were, you know, basically a little bit hawkish, slightly hawkish towards the end of the week. But also as well, they have elections and the uncertainty around those elections has uh, weakened the uh, the yen. And so, um yeah, the elections are actually, I think, on uh, today on Sunday as I'm recording this. And I think Monday we should find out whether uh, the government uh, gets the majority or maybe if they don't, if they lose the majority. If they lose the majority, then it makes it harder for the Bank of Japan to actually continue hiking rates and be hawkish. And we actually could see uh, the yen start to devalue a bit more. So, um Going to the uh, Japanese channel, and it says here that Bank of Japan Governor Kazuo Ueda uh, hinted that more interest rate hikes are coming, saying that figuring out the right size and timing for further normalization of Japan's easy monetary policy is his overarching preoccupation. So Ueda's remarks add to signs that the bank uh, is seeking the right timing for another rate hike, which most Bank of Japan watchers expect will come by early next year. So no, you know, no, no real uh, hikes this year. The um, governor also indicated that simply waiting isn't necessarily necessarily the right solution, as sending only cautious messages in the face of uncertainty could lead to undesirable market positions. So basically, saying if he, if he continues to be a bit dovish, um, we could see, um, you know prices weaken and that is actually undesirable as well so um the yen at the moment i think this week is is going to be a pivotal week and again if uh, the um the elections come out uh, and, and it's the majority government and then the bank of japan come out and they're a bit hawkish then we could see uh, a bit of uh, yen strength but um, ultimately i'm not really interested in trading the uh, the dollar yen but if you are um, probably more upside may be the uh, path for these resistance. So I think probably around the um, the one four nine three nine one four nine forty area and below would be a decent area to look for uh, some long trades in and around that zone there. Um, shorting this into the election, I'm not too. Um, I, I wouldn't be too keen on. Uh, dollar Swiss. So dollar Swiss again. The path of this resistance for me is to the upside. Uh, yeah, prices really haven't pulled back at all. Uh, but if they do, and again, the key really is um, a Donald Trump win. I do think prices will be a definite buy. So any kind of pullbacks down into this um, larger demand zone. But when you have a large demand zone, what you want to do is kind of break the large demand zone up into um you know areas of support and resistance so but this area seems a bit uh bit 
on the expensive side for me. So I'd rather wait for a kind of like a deeper um, area of support and resistance. Maybe that zone's probably around there. So, yep, yeah, that looks decent. You've got an area of, you know, resistance, resistance, a bit of support there and support there. So down into those 0 0.855 area, that would be a nice area to look for a buy trade on the dollar Swiss. I am interested in the dollar Swiss. Uh, dollar CAD, dollar CAD has just been on an absolute tear. The uh, Canadian dollar um, and the Bank of Canada, they ended up cutting rates by 50 basis points. And so um, on the daily, we are up actually into this area of supply. Um, I still think the, uh, the the dollar should be a buy against the Canadian dollar. Um, the Federal Reserve are cutting less than the Bank of Canada. So any, any deep pullbacks, I think, are buying opportunities. But again, um, fundamentally, that's what you, should, you know, I, I would be doing. But in terms of, um, you know, uh, risk sentiment, the election sentiment, it, 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 price movement over the next week is going to be purely driven by what happens on the election. So, um, so yeah, let's see uh, on the dollar CAD pound dollar again, kind of grinding lower, lower highs and lower lows. Not really a pair I'm too interested in. I do, sorry, think that the uh, pound may continue to weaken um, uh, from a fundamental perspective as the Bank of England are looking to continue to cut rates. Uh, they held, I think, at the last meeting, but into November, um, uh, they could, uh, what the market is pricing in, um, a bit of rate uh, cuts and so it says here foreign exchange markets are positioning for further sterling weakness ahead of the uk budget on wednesday so that's another major thing we've got the uk budget so fiscal um fiscal spending fiscal decisions uh, with both hedge funds and asset managers continuing to sell the currency according to citigroup incorporated while it's still the best performing currency against the dollar year to date the market's confidence in the pound has been crumbling after traders increased bets on the bank of england interest rate cuts and it says our data suggests uh, that the fx market is positioned slightly bearish sterling ahead of the budget says uh christian uh krasikov global head of foreign exchange quantitative investor solutions at city both hedge funds and asset managers have been net sterling sellers since the start of september so um i don't think that the the pound is a, is a seller against all currencies but against the dollar, it may continue to be, and like I said, especially because of um, everything really being driven at the moment by uh, what happens in the election. So I think any pullbacks, even a pullback into uh, even but the 130s and just above that, I think that's going to be a bit too uh, uh, not deep enough of a pullback for me. If I was looking for any trades, it would be back up into maybe the 131s. But this is this pair is not something that I'm actually even looking at. But if you are, I would say that would be the area to look for a um, a sell trade, really. Um, if you're looking for buy trades and buying the pound against the dollar, um, then really you probably have to wait for either prices to move down to this demand zone or if prices do make a, a new high and then a pullback into that demand zone. But uh, again, not really keen on trading the pound dollar. Uh, pound yen, um, again with yen weakness, uh, we kind of grinded a bit higher. So no supply zone there. Um, and uh, again, we're kind of setting up for more, uh, maybe, maybe a bit more demand zones. So um, uh, very wide zone of demand, unfortunately, and not pretty, but this is just the way that it has to be drawn because we're making higher highs and higher lows, right? So if you make a high, low, high, and you're making higher, gradual higher highs, yeah, like that, then what you can do is you can draw individual um, demand zones like that. Yeah, so demand right there. And then you could draw like another one right there if you wanted to, and another one right there. But as they're overlapping, looks a bit messy. So you so basically you could just cover all of this as just one uh, demand zone. Again, when you have quite a large zone of demand, right, because at the end of the day, we're seeing uh, demand take place, right? Demand, 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 driving prices higher. Um, then you're looking for extra confluences like 
you know, some support and resistance, either horizontal, diagonal. And there's some others that we use as well in the group uh, to kind of determine where um, value is in terms of uh, cheap and expensive areas within a wide area or even a narrow area of demand. So um, that would be, you know, one area. The other one would be probably down in the um, in the. Uh, bottom of that zone there so we know that institutions have been buying and selling in these areas so if you're looking for you know uh, an, a decent area of a pullback that would be the first one and then you're looking for down into the 190s to be the second zone for a buy trade if you're looking for sell trades then um, I think now is actually a really good time and um in fact I do think that there could be selling opportunities especially if Again, uh, you know, Monday or Sunday open Monday, the uh, Japanese uh, government uh, form a majority, then, you know, we could see the yen selling, um, uh, actually appreciating. So uh, we do have an area of support and resistance as well within that area, top end area of supply. So uh, technically, it's actually really nice. But um, again, you'd have to really kind of. Uh, get have the confluence of those fundamental factors before looking at selling the um, uh, pound yen euro dollar so the euro dollar um, grinding lower the uh, euro has had a bit of a reversal in fortunes in terms of um, uh, the central bank and uh, the central bank being actually a little bit dovish and the market pricing in uh, a bit more uh, rate cuts and there is the possibility that we could see um, the uh, the euro zone cut by 50 basis points um, in I think it's in November or December I think this might be December so it says here that the euro is on course for its longest weekly slide against the dollar in eight months pressured by growing anticipation expectations sorry that the European Central Bank may deliver a half point interest rate cut in December so that's bigger than usual so signs of economic weakness in the eurozone are boosting the chances of the ECB's policy easing becoming more aggressive just as the Federal Reserve may slow its rate cuts pace of rate cuts so again you have one central bank the fed who are looking to um you know maybe maybe not cut as aggressively right but then you have the market starting to price in more aggressive cuts and deeper aggressive cuts for the uh for the euro so that's why you're seeing this uh come into come into play and the data does support that narrative as well so again i think the path of least resistance is still to the downside if you can get a decent pullback into maybe the 108 um the top of that zone that, that zone 10871 um then i think that's a really nice area to look for a sell trade and but and by the way if you are waiting for um you know uh the enrollment to open i know i've been receiving quite a few messages um about when enrollment opens i wasn't going to open it for the rest of the year i was going to open it in january but i've decided to open it one more time um for this year and it'll be for a limited time only it'll be for the 4th of december so if you go to trading 180.com uh, uh, enrollment opens on the 4th of this of november and um it will be for maybe a couple of days it's not going to be for too long so if you are considering joining then uh this that would be your last chance for the year because for, for the rest of november uh second half of november and uh into december i will not be opening uh, at all maybe the next time might be january or february so um check that out and um yeah so looking at the uh the euro dollar just basically looking for sell trades at the moment uh, I do think that it could be a massive reversal again if uh, Kamala Harris does win the presidential election. I think all bets are off the table. We could see, uh, you know, a massive move back into the one tens, one elevens. So, um, you know, basically the market is pricing in a Trump win. So that's the reason why again we're one of the reasons why we're seeing uh, price move to the downside as well as monetary policy divergences. Uh, but again, I think uh, the dollar is more of the buy than the sell at the moment um so yeah that's where we are euro yen euro yen so um i think the yen should be more of the buy but again it's really more data dependent so come uh monday if we do get some uh again i, I keep saying this but the um 
government uh, get the majority, then I do think that the price should start to sell off. And this actually looks like a bit of a stop hunt, a deeper stop hunt. You've got a level there, level there, and then this could be where the stop hunt is. So if it does start to close back inside, um, for those of you who know to trade how to trade stop hunts, I think that would be a decent area to look for a sell trade below that 164 round number. Um, looking at um, any kind of buys, if you are looking to buy the euro, then uh, yeah, you're looking for a pullback down into this zone here. So where are we yeah, about there? And you've got demand from that zone. So I'm um, not sure why you would really want to buy the euro. Um, they're looking to cut rates, whereas the yen and the Bank of Japan are not. So they're looking to hike rates. So eventually we should see prices roll over. And uh, I got stopped out, in fact, on the rest of my positions. I had two positions open for two very, very small, one, I think one, one break even and one small loss. Um, so the overall trade ended up being a small, a tiny win uh, on this uh, as we basically shot up uh, during the week to kind of uh, hit my trailing stop loss on that one. But I'll re-enter and hopefully we could see some further downside. But let's see what happens on that one uh euro pound euro pound i do think again the path of these resistance should be to the downside i think the pound is in better shape than the uh than the euro even though the bank of england are looking to um uh, cut rates i don't think um they're going to be as aggressive when the market is pricing in as many cuts for the Bank of England as they are for the euro. So I think any pullbacks into an area where probably the round number, the, the 0 0.84 area where you've got that level of support and resistance uh, in that zone is where you, I would look to uh, establish uh, some short trades. So still waiting for a bit more of a pullback. I think that area is very, very nice. Let's see what uh, the market gives us. If it's this week, next week, or the maybe next month, who knows? But if it does something like that, then I'll look for uh, a sell trade in that area if I can, uh, you know, see an entry. Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar. The Australian dollar has been um, has been weakening, uh, depreciating, um, and this is really due to kind of more risk off sentiment that's come into the market. A lot of uncertainty. And also as well, the Australian dollar uh, is likely to be uh, affected by uh, the Trump uh, Trump win. The reason being is because um, Trump has basically said that he um, will raise tariffs on Chinese uh, imports, right? And so, uh, or Chinese, you know, Chinese exports. And so what that does is, is that is is likely to um, affect China's economy, because if they're, if they're not selling or unable to sell as much to the world's second largest economy, which is, you know, the US, then, um, of course, they their economy is going to be affected. And Australia are or well, China, um, Australia export a lot of uh, their commodities to um, to China. So if China are, you know, suffering and, you know, uh, in terms of their economy and they're not necessarily investing in much infrastructure projects based on the fact that, you know, Donald Trump is raising tariffs, then by proxy, you're going to have a situation where Australia are affected because, you know, China might not be able to, um, you know, uh, uh, expand. Therefore, Australia may end up um, you know, exporting less, which is going to then affect their economy. So in a risk off environment, yeah, uh, especially this risk off environment, the um, secondary effect of a Donald Trump win is going to be a potential weaker Australian dollar. So that's the reason why you're seeing this play out as well to the downside. So um, I do think, though, that fundamentally, from a monetary policy perspective, the Australian dollar are still one of the, um, uh, if not the better of the central banks in terms of they're looking to cut rates next year. But 
the market at the moment is being driven by the election narrative. So the market has to price in, um, you know, the uh, the election. And so that's what's happening. So again, it's buy the rumor or sell the rumor in case in, in the case of the Australian dollar. So um, I think for now, as long as Donald Trump is seen as being uh, ne the next president, I do think that the path for least resistance should still be to the downside for the Australian dollar, US dollar. But I think after the election, we could see a bit more um, upsides because I think then the fundamentals will return. I think everything should be priced in and then um, we may get some sort of reversal. Now, where that reversal may be, who knows? It could be down at the 65 cents, 64 cent area. But um, yeah, let's see. But again, not really a pair that I'm interested in trading at the moment. Of course, you can if you want to. But if you are looking to trade it, personally, I would look for a bit more of a pullback before looking at going short. Uh, gold, again, making new highs, pulled back a little bit, um, but continuing to make, again, more highs. Risk off sentiment, you know, kicking in. Um, and again, rate cuts still on the cards, right? We're in a rate cutting cycle. So um we do have i think again more upside potential for gold uh so really any pullbacks should be buying opportunities i think so if we do pull back eventually to the 2065 area i do think that that from a demand zone perspective should be really nice as a buy and it's the same thing with uh, pretty much silver as well as in a pullback if you're looking at a silver chart down into a decent demand zone before looking at going long on the S&P, uh, we did pull back a bit, sell off, but then we did end up um, shooting right up, right? And the S&P is being driven um, mainly by uh, the rate cutting cycle. Um, as obviously we get cheap money, um, to invest in higher yielding assets like the S&P, but also as well, the fears of um, a recession have pretty much receded. So um, if we had recession fears, we probably may sell off and have a bit of more of a drastic sell off. Right. But the market, um, as we saw earlier, there's a, you know, there's they're pricing in a, uh, well, economists anyway are saying that there's probably a 25% chance of a recession. So those are really low odds. So as long as that remains, I think any pullbacks really should be buying opportunities um, going into uh, the future, continue buying opportunities. So um, that's really my, uh, my play on the S&P. So now looking at the trade updates so um trade update on the swiss yen so swiss yen um managed this trade managed to be a break even trade got in on this from a couple of weeks ago ended up hitting a nice one to one target ended up taking off 50% off i was hoping that the uh, the yen would strengthen over the swiss franc but because of the uncertainty around the um the uh, elections uh, i did basically throw my stock down to around here and then on the monday ended up stopping me out so uh, again uh, break even trade on this one as i had taken 50 50 off and i got stopped out pretty much where my entry was so um i do think that the swiss yen is still a sell and uh let's see what happens on that one though the uh uh, I do think the, the Swiss franc is more of a sell, but in a risk off environment, it'll be harder to tell. But fundamentally, I think the yen should be more of a buy. But again, we'll see um, the, um, you know, the elections uh, basically tonight or into tomorrow and see if they got the uh, majority. Uh, so that's that. So I'm flat on that. The euro yen, pretty similar thing on that. I did manage to get one position on here in terms of a profit from a couple of weeks ago the other two positions so i ended up getting in uh, on uh, that position there uh, there was two other positions which was here and here managed to get filled and again similar thing pretty much ended up taking one to one profit on that trade and then i had two open positions uh trailed my stop down to around uh here just above these swings and so um, when prices ended up 
put him back on the, I think it was the, yeah, the, the Monday and a Tuesday, ended up stopping me out for one was like a pretty much a small loss and the other one was a was a break even trade. So again, bit bit of a small win on that one overall, but um, yeah, I'm looking for another entry to the downside if uh, we get some favorable results from the uh, Bank of Japan. Uh, New Zealand yen. So original entry was here. And then I had, you know, a few sell orders right here. So this week, uh, managed to get triggered into three positions. And when we came up here, basically, the uh, I was aiming for a nice uh, one to one trade. Uh, so the one-to-one -one trade actually happened right there. So that's what I took first profits off. So now I'm only in two positions, which is going to be that position there and the original market order right here. So again, I'm hoping that the um, the New Zealand uh, dollar is a bit more dovish in a risk-off environment, as well as um, the yen to strengthen. And again, what I'll do is I will uh, take some profit if we can hit another one-to-one -one uh, which is going to be here. If we can hit that one to one, then I'll take profit there. And then what I'll do is I'll look to uh, hold the final position and see if I can um, we can get a bit more out of this trade and get down to somewhere around these lows. But again, it's just going to depend on what happens fundamentally. So um, so far so good with that trade. The Euro Aussie. Um, so Euro Aussie. First trade I've uh, been holding since this high here. This trade is now a break even trade. I've had my stop right here uh, and maintained it. It nearly got stopped out on Friday, but not quite. And then I managed to re enter into um, uh, the trade right there. So uh, we did pull back. Now, this was a, 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 um, a trade where I ended up getting in, into all four positions. So from the market order, then I've got that sell pending order, sell pending order, sell pending order. So four positions. This uh, last sell pending order ended up being, again, a nice winner. So going for a one to one trade on that one. So when it touched me in, uh, triggered me in, then the one to one was hit there. Nice. So now I'm in three trades. And again, I'm hoping that the uh, the euro starts to roll over a bit. And if I can then uh, get to at least a one to one on, you know, that second position there, that would be decent. So that's where my next target is down here, which I think is definitely achievable. And then I have two positions open. And what I'll do is I'll end up just holding those two positions to see how far, um, you know, the... Uh, price can go but let's see so one win three open positions and uh yeah uh we'll see what happens on the monday or during the week and then we have final update which is the aussie cad now the aussie cad i ended up uh hitting a one-to-one -one on here but it was overnight so what i was waiting for as prices pulled back when i uh, woke up in the morning. I was hoping that prices would pull somewhere around here before taking some profit, but it never did. So um, I went to take 50% off here. So I just kind of held it. Um, and the, the the Aussie CAD, really, the Australian dollar should be the one strengthening over the CAD. But uh, because really the Bank of Canada cut by 50 basis points. Now, the reason why the Australian dollar is weakening against the CAD is because the market sees a Trump win as affecting the Canadian dollar, sorry, the uh, Australian dollar more than the Canadian dollar. Because as I explained before, um, you know, the Donald Trump win means uh, higher tariffs on Chinese goods, which will affect the Chinese economy, which then affects the Australian economy. So, the market is taking that narrative um, at the moment and saying that a Trump win wouldn't necessarily affect the Canadian economy as much as it would the Australian economy. So although, yes, they cut by 50 basis points, the market is just like, well, the bigger threat is Trump 
win. So, and I guess maybe if you want to call it a threat, depending, you know, not getting necessarily getting political, but the threat to this trade is what I really mean. So the biggest threat to this trade and maybe some more downside will be um, a Donald Trump win. But ultimately, the uh, when you look at the um, the monetary policies of the Canadian dollar and they are looking to cut by potentially another 25 basis points this year 25 or 50 basis points is what is being um is what is being priced in potentially and the australian dollar are actually looking to hold this year um you would think that the australian dollar is the you know that should be the winner but um certain narratives um you know, take precedence and the narrative that's taking precedent at the moment is the election. So fundamentals taking a bit more of a back seat on uh, in the short term. But once the dust settles, I do believe that the, um, you know, fundamentals will kick back in. So if I do get stopped out on this trade, that's fine. I'll look for an entry here because um, as we already know, you know, that the Australian's uh, central bank job is to actually weaken the currency. And so I think that's when the fundamentals will kick back in again. So those are the trade updates and the one new trade this week. And that was actually right on a Friday afternoon stroke evening. And it was the uh, Australian uh, Swiss franc. And I thought I'd take a, a very small position or very small positions on this. And we ended up getting, as uh, soon as I entered into the trade, um, prices just started reversing. So um, on the on like the last few hours on of the of the day, so I ended up getting in right here, uh, and then entering into three positions rather than four, and these were all all half positions as well, half my position size because I did think that there was going to be some sort of risk, and then we literally just shot all the way down now for those of you who know how to trade stop hunts this could this does look like a very nice stop hunt it came close to stopping me out not quite as my stop uh loss is at the uh 0 0.57 i think it's 11 or 12 somewhere around there now um if this starts to come back inside the area then in fact that's going to look like a really nice stop hunt um, there is risk of sentiment at the moment and a lot of uncertainty, but from a fundamental pers perspective, the Australian dollar really should be the buy over the Swiss franc. Swiss franc, of course, strengthens during the risk off environment or typically does anyway, not all the time. Just like in a risk on environment, you know, you, the Australian dollar won't, you know, just continue moving parabolic against the uh, the Swiss franc in the same way that even in a risk off environment, you just don't, you wouldn't get um, just straight downward move on on price. Prices move in, in cycles, right? You've got waves or cycles, however you uh, want to describe it, right? They move in waves. So you could, we could see something like this happen and then to the downside. If we do, then brilliant. If not, then it is what it is. But ultimately uh, entered into three positions. So let's see, I've got one position there, another one down here. And then my final one was triggered in here. So I just need about a one-to-one -one, uh, from this position here for me to start to, you know, make some money on it. And then if I can get a nice one-to-one -one on here, then I will be in a decent, you know, some a profitable trade. And then I, what I can do is swing trade this final position, hold this position, and hopefully the... Uh, the fundamentals kick in. If I get stopped out, it's all right. I'll just wait for another entry to the downside somewhere over in this zone or maybe down into this uh, demand zone down at these lows. So let's see what happens with this trade. So uh, my fundamental bias is, is long, but obviously I definitely understood that there was a risk to this trade as the risk of sentiment um, meant that the Swiss franc could you know, strengthen which it had it did in the last like few hours of the trading date on Friday. But those are the uh that's the trade updates. So uh yep. Yeah. Again, just a quick reminder that 4th of November is when enrollment opens again and it'll be the last time this year. So I'll be open for a few days. So check out uh trading180.com for more information. I hope you have a great trading week and take care.